Welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors Online, a weekly webcast produced by the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I'm your host, Mike Anderson. My guest this week is Assistant Wildlife Division Chief Casey Anderson. Today we're going to talk about chronic wasting disease, also known as CWD. Casey, explain what is chronic wasting disease. So CWD is a disease that affects the cervid family, which in North Dakota includes mule deer, white-tailed deer, moose, and elk. Um, and a lot of times we forget that it, uh, it affects our once-in-a-lifetime opportunities in moose and elk in North Dakota. Every time one of these species contracts it, um, they die from it. There's, there doesn't seem to be any um, so-called resistance or anything that has been shown where a deer can get it and then survive. Eventually they all succumb, of it, succumb to it. Okay, where has CWD been found in North Dakota? Um, CWD has been found in three hunting units in North Dakota. Um, our 3F2 unit, which is part of Grant County in that area, um, and our 3A1 and 3B1, which are both of the instances occurred in Williams County, um, but it, in both of those units. Okay, what regulations do we have in place for hunters? Once you get CWD, uh, in an area, you want to keep it from spreading to other deer. It's a transmissible disease, spreads between, between deer from contact with deer fluids or nose-to-nose -nose type of contact. Um, and so with any disease that is spread like that, um, one of the things you want to do is try to reduce the chance that those deer come into contact. Now obviously deer um, congregate in the winter and things like that. Um, and those are natural things that deer do and, and we're never going to stop that. So essentially what we're trying to do with some of the regulations, which there's a baiting restriction in place, which what, what happens when, when we bait sometimes is, is you, you tend to ask deer to lick on the same spot every time and multiple deer. Um, and so by not baiting and we encourage people not to feed deer, period, to really reduce the risk. And then one of the other regulations that we have in those areas is we have a carcass movement restriction. Um, so the parts of the animal where CWD concentrate are, are in the spinal tissue, nervous tissue, and the brain. And so what we try to do is once we have it in an area, we don't want it to go somewhere else. We don't want it to be moved long distances that are maybe unnatural spreads because that, then that happens a lot faster. Casey, let's go into some scenarios. If I have a buck tag in unit 3F2, for example, mm -hmm. and if it's a nice size buck and I want to have the head mounted, what do I need to do? Right, so there, it depends on how you want to preserve that trophy, potentially. Um, you know, there's, there's a few things you can do and some of it's going to take a little more preparation before you even go. Um, and and that, that comes to even with a doe tag, a person should do a little more preparation, learn the rules so that they're prepared to do what needs to be done because you can't take the spinal tissue or the brain tissue um, and, and other tissues out uh, with you. So you can bring the meat out and then with a trophy animal you're either going to have to cape the head somehow, um, take the hide off the head and then remove almost all the tissue out of, out of the out of the skull if you're going to do a European mount. You're going to need to clean that skull pretty good. There should be no brain tissue left, no eye tissue left, um, no large chunks of meat and things like that. It should be pretty clean. Um, and so, and then, but if you're just going to do a head mount, it actually gets a little easier um, because you can take the skull cap, the V cut, to just keep the antlers intact in between, take all the flesh and all the brain off of that skull cap, and then take your caped out cape with you uh, out in to a taxidermist at that point. So what we recommend is that most people contact a taxidermist before they go um, if they think they're going to shoot one big enough to get a, get a trophy mount um, or contact a taxidermist within those units um, and, and then you, you don't have to have anything done. You can just take the head to that taxidermist within those units um, but they'll have some ideas on what to do and they might have um, certain ways they might want you to handle something um, so that they can they can do an effective mount of your trophy when when you get it to them. Okay, so let's clarify. So if you if you're gonna take your dough and have it processed at a 
meat processing place, uh, you could just take the whole animal as long as it's within that unit. As long as you stay within the unit. All the information with chronic waste and disease right. is on our website at gf.nd.gov. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's another question. What if you're going hunting in another state? Right, and so there are, there are a list on our website, there's a list of states where you can't bring material back into North Dakota, and that's to protect us from moving it into an area that we may not have it, um, increasing the chance of other deer getting it, even in areas that have it, by bringing something in from outside. Um, and so you need to check the regulations so you don't move those pieces into the state. You may want to check with those states because they may have some surveillance they're doing, um, they may require you to turn in some samples if you're hunting in certain areas of, of their state. Um, and they just may have some other information on what to do. So sometimes they have areas as like we do that you can't take parts out of that area. And so you're going to want to know if you're in one of those areas or not. So do your homework, yeah. right, essentially. Okay, um, a question we get from time to time. I mean, is baiting the same as food plots? Um, no, baiting is not the same as food plots. Most people will do one or the other for the same reason, maybe, um, to attract deer. Um, but realistically, when people bait and put out, you know, whatever that is, a food source or a lure or whatever that is when they're baiting, they're putting it in one tiny little spot. Like under a tree stand, right. for example. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And, the, and the other thing they're doing is they're probably doing it for longer periods of time than a food plot is used. And so what the difference is, is the difference in intensity of, of deer contact and duration of deer contact. And, and any time you increase one of those, you're going to increase the chance of a positive deer coming in contact with deer that aren't positive. Um, and so by planting food plots, um, for the purpose of of hunting or a food source for deer, you're spreading that out. I mean, you think of it, even if you only plant an acre food plot versus putting out a bait pile, nobody spreads their bait over a whole acre. Right, right. You know, um, and so that's the difference. So if you have 15 deer that are coming into a, an acre food plot versus a five-gallon pail of whatever you put out, Right. Um, there's obviously less chance that those deer are going to actually eat the same piece or eat saliva from the deer that was just there before that, um, or the, you know, the feces or urine from those deer. And so, so anytime we can spread deer out more, um, when you get into bigger food plots, of course, you know, our state being an agricultural state, deer are going to be out in fields picking around. Now you're getting to the point where that, that's just what our landscape looks like. Um, how does the Game and Fish Department monitor CWD? Right, so CWD, um, we go and do head sampling on a third of the state every year. And so this year it happens to be the eastern third of the state where we're doing our, it's kind of just a um, monitoring of is it in a new area or not, we need to find it early. Um, if it is, and then the areas that we have CWD, we monitor every year. Um, and so we do head collection from hunter harvested deer in those areas. Um, and also we do what we call targeted surveillance, which is roadkill deer, um, deer that may look sick that somebody calls in. Um, and so we determine if that's something we need to try to test or if it's maybe something else. And so <coughs> um, those are kind of the two ways that we will take a look at critters that are out there and try to find, we want to find it fast and if we have it in an area, we want to make sure that the management that we're doing um, is helping to keep it from spreading into other deer. Elk and moose, for example, uh, the seasons are opening shortly here, or, mm -hmm. or have opened. Uh, what are we doing for? Right, and so elk, elk and moose, um, we ask people that uh, they turn in their heads if they're not having you know a trophy mount or something. We don't have a whole lot of moose and elk hunters in the state, oh, just over 470 licenses per each species and so we get a lot of those samples every year of the ones that get harvested. Um, we have M10 which is a moose unit that we have carcass restrictions in, movement restrictions, mm -hmm. um, and so we want to make sure that those hunters 
you know, are aware of that. It's going to take a little more work, you know, to, to obviously quarter out a moose um, or things like that. Or, and also E6, um, which is the unit that is in Sioux County, has carcass restrictions uh, because of the proximity to CWD positives. So. Okay, and we've never had a positive in North Dakota with moose and elk. Right, we've never had a positive moose or elk in North Dakota yet. As a wildlife manager, what are some of the challenges dealing with chronic wasting disease? So your biggest challenge is to try not to let it get here in the first place. Um, and that's really the best thing to do because CWD never goes away once you have it in an area. I can live in the soil for what seems to be forever. Um, and so, you know, that, that's kind of the biggest step. Let's try not to, for one, move it by human movement um, and then also what you try to do is once you have it in an area, now you've got to figure out how to maintain a low prevalence because if, it, if the prevalence gets high in the population, deer start really dying off in large enough numbers to affect your population. And so we do things like the baiting restriction, which is you know, reducing the risk of deer potentially spreading it from one to the next. Um, and then also we have given out a few more tags in those units. Um, anytime we get a chance, we want to allow hunters to help us with management. Hunters are, are key in managing this disease because we get the samples from them. Um, they're the ones that are willing to go out and shoot some of the deer um, to try to keep some of those populations from really blowing up to the point where, they're, where they might be too many in an area. The density gets high enough that the disease spreads easy. Um, and so, you know, like I said, hunters are, are a real big um, help in this. The cheapest way to obviously manage a disease like this, um, but without hunters hunting, you know, then, then we would have to do some other type of management to maybe control some of those populations. So it's very important that they provide their sample during deer season to one of our deer collection, deer head collection sites. Yes, yeah, bring it to, when, once we start the rifle season, we'll have some deer collection sites um, out on the countryside and those will be listed on our website. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, if, if a hunter can get those heads to one of those deer collection sites, it definitely helps us. Okay, um, a big question, do hunters have to be worried when harvesting animals? The Center for Disease Control, CDC, recommends if you know it's positive, not to eat it. Um, and so we encourage hunters in those areas obviously to for the purposes of monitoring the disease in the deer to get their um, heads to one of those drop sites. But also, if, if that deer would happen to come back positive, we let those hunters know. Um, so then they can decide at that point if, uh, what they want to do with it. It has not, CWD has not been shown to cross over into humans. Um, but like I said, the CDC recommends that you don't need it if you know it's positive. A lot of good information, Casey, thank you. Like Casey just mentioned, for more information or regulations on chronic wasting disease, visit the Game & Fish website at gf.nd.gov. For Assistant Wildlife Division Chief Casey Anderson and the rest of the staff here at the Game & Fish Department, thanks for joining us for this week's Outdoors Online. We'll see you again next week.